Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to be building a PC, a NUC PC, a little small tiny device, but it's still quite powerful. i5, 32 gig of RAM, 4 terabyte drive. This will be the simplest PC build you've ever seen. Follow along, let's get started. So in this video, we're actually going to be building this PC that we have here. It is a NUC, so it's a mini PC kit, uh, and we're going to enter, and we're going to add into that a SSD hard drive. This one's actually four terabytes, which has got loads of storage, and then 32 gig of RAM. So this box is actually quite powerful for something so small. And here's a previous NUC um, for anyone who's interested. A really small form factor, and you can get little Vespa mounts, so you can mount these directly onto the back of your computer if you want so you can have a completely clean desk and they normally come with SD cards, USB so it's a decent little machine at the end of the day I quite like them because they're small and useful to run sort of servers and background jobs they don't take up a lot of room and aren't particularly noisy so I've used these for TV servers, file servers, uh, build servers in the past um, but this one isn't powerful enough for my current use case which is why we have a new build. This will be relatively quick, so stick with me. Let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is get it out of the case. Now the thing about these knocks is these knocks um, have a CPU already built into them. So this one's got an i5 uh, CPU already in the box. Already in, so there's no external CPU requirements. The only thing you really need is memory and storage. So here is the new one. Nice gray, black as we can see. And then these are going to be the power supply and some standard some units, etc. So there's the power supply. As you can see, uh, the manual and the Vespa mount. So this allows you generally to mount more or less back. Um, generally used on the back of a on the back of a monitor, but you could put this like in a room, or if you want to put it in the corner of your bedroom or in a closet, for example, you could mount this onto the wall. So I'm not going to look at these today, but you can more than welcome have a look at them. Let's put these back in. This is a power supply, which we don't need just yet. So let's just clear our workspace. And there's the screws, etc. So we need to take we need to take this off. One, two, there we go. Three, four. Flipping it over. Now, case should just pop right off. Perfecto. And as you see here, here's the hard drive bay, and then here is the uh, memory. Now these are laptop memory sticks, so make sure if you're getting them that you're getting a notebook laptop uh, memory. But it does mean you can spec these out as however you want. Now these ones are 16 gig, which is going to be a very powerful little machine. 32 gig, very useful. So I'm just going to pop these in. Now they actually, as you can see, this isn't completely centered, so you can only put these in one way. Okay, and there's only two slots to put them in, so it's, it's really not that difficult. You just slot the bottom one in first, and then you click it in, and then you push it down, and you'll see it gets clicked in. There you go. You'll see it's clicked in now. And that is it in. And then we do the second one. How quick is this? It took me longer getting the screws out than getting the memory in. Okay, and then there's the second one. And pop it in, pop it in, and then push it down. And there you go, 32 gig of RAM installed. Now we have hard drive. So let's look at getting this hard drive in removed before installing. Oakley, Oakley. 
So let's just slot in here. Oops. You can see that's not the right way. As I'm gonna flip it around, pop it in there, and here we go. Click and clip in. Perfect. And that's it. So front, back to the front. There's the front, there's the front. And that is the computer assembled, folks. Um, now, the next thing we do is install an operating system on it. Now you have your choices. Um, generally it's going to be Windows or a Unix build. This particular one, um, I actually have a plan for it and it's going to be a Unix build, but we'll run through that process next. Uh, and I'll show you what you would do for Windows. And I'll also do a Windows build on this channel. Um, so it, if you want to do this with Windows, um, you can watch this video up until this point and then switch to the next video. And I'll put a card in about now to the other video um, when I do a Windows build, because I'm going to do a tar build and a uh, bit of a budget gaming machine. Well, it's got a few use cases, but we want to be able to run some games on it as well. So it's going to have a 1080Ti, and we'll do that shortly. So that is it. We are ready to go. We're ready to plug it in, power it up, and then take our USB with whatever operating system we prefer um, and get us up and running. All right, so let's get the installable device. So we have our pen drive, yaw. So this one is gonna have Ubuntu on it, yaw. So basically what you can see, you can download Ubuntu directly from the Linux website. Um, I've already downloaded it, it's here. But you can also uh, go and do Windows exactly the same. So you can download a Windows version. I think you get 12 months before having to activate it, I can't remember. Uh, and then with the ISO, the image, the disk image, we then use on Mac, on other um, operating systems, there's similar uh, products but it creates a bootable USB. Now, as I'm doing the NUC, it doesn't have an optical drive, um, so USB booting is the way to go. So what we do is, first, we make sure the USB is accessible, and we do that using the disk utilities. Now, I'm using Big Sur, um, which means that when I come in here, I normally would want to reformat, arrays, uh, and then when you see the arrays, you have to change the scheme to be a bootable scheme. Now, the reason for this is the Big Sur is trying to be a bit more helpful, but it's hiding stuff by default, so we have to remember to come over here and turn on show all devices. And once we do all devices, we can actually get to not the mounted drive, uh, which is the loaded up version, but the actual hard drive itself. So I can up here, I can then erase here. When I erase here, I can change it from a master boot record to a good partition map. And we need to do that in order to create a bootable um, device. So I'm just going to make this Ubuntu and then hit erase. That didn't get wrong. Now you can do this on Windows and on Unix, but there's slightly different steps for each one. Um, Alright, so that's done. Now the next thing you have to remember to do is to unmount the volume as the it has been formatted and mounted. And we need to unmount it so that the etcher can have full access. Right, so here is the file that I downloaded from Ubuntu. Let's drop in there, select target. I'm going to put it on the USB drive, and at now, flash. And that's basically it. Type in my password. And we are fetching. And that's basically it, folks. Once that is finished, I eject this USB, and uh, then we get to plug it into the NUC. And the Windows is exactly the same, so if we went here and downloaded the Windows edition that we wanted, we would get an ISO file and we just drop it in in the same way and do exactly the same on the USB. So this will just complete successfully, two minutes, there's no point waiting for those two minutes, there's nothing else to see, 
I'll show what it looks like when it finishes. A few moments later. 97, 98, 99. And then there's a validation step as we can see. A few moments later. And as we finish validating, just checking that it's good to go. Yep, it is ready to go. Now we will eject it and get to installing Unix on our NUC. Two hours later. Let's just run through the install process so you can finish off and see us get our NUC actually connected up. So I did do the BIOS refresh that you would have seen. Uh, and then this is just the default settings after that. Uh, we've detected that it's a Ubuntu install, so we're gonna do Ubuntu. 12 seconds later. Keyboard, Wi-Fi, Net. Later. All right. We start now. Installation. And press Control. And that is it, folks. That is a knock created and installed. As you can see, we have Visual Studio and Spotify and a Plex Media Server and Slack and Python Coder, Android apps, IDE, Java generally. So you can do anything with one of these. OBS if I'm recording videos or doing video editing, VLC for watching videos, Discord for a chat server, uh, the GIMP GNU image manipulation. That is basically a um, Install now. That is basically a Photoshop, open source Photoshop y thing. It's not as good as Photoshop and Clear, but it's still a powerful piece of software. Let's install here. The only one I really want to install today is the Visual Studio Code. I quite like that editor. I'm going to care about the rest. And you'll see it comes with some apps pre installed. So it's got Calendar, Firefox, and then it's got the Open Libra Office Suite. Um, I haven't used it in a while, so I'm not sure how good it is these days, but it generally opens Word and, can, and PowerPoint, etc., and can export to them. The music player, I don't know what that is, Rima, I haven't used it. I haven't used some of these. There's a game. Uh, app Store, Startup Apps, Mail Client to do, Transition is a torrent, if I remember correctly, uh, Video Player, and then some other utilities, Sudoku, Text Editor. I just prefer the Visual Code Text Editor, but you can do most things. And it uh, is, I haven't used it in a while, but I'd say it's going to be more memory efficient than the hogs that are the new Apple operating system and uh, Windows. But if you were to run the media server, you would just grab this Flex media server, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, we went from buying the parts, we bought the NUC, got the uh, uh, laptop memory that fits it, and then a big hard drive, and now we've installed uh, Ubuntu, and then you can see it's got a nice user interface, you could install the media server and use this to stream, to create your own Netflix or whatever you'd like to do. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. It's goodbye from me, Darren Rogan.